Hallo, liebe Schwiegersohn, ich brauche ein neues Computer. Meiner geht langsam kaputt. Er zeigt immer mehr Grüne an war schon wenn möglich ein kleiner Computer mit Christina schicken Contest. Ich war dir sehr dankbar. Oh, wow, my German sucks. In a nutshell, what you just heard was my mother-in-law asking for a replacement PC. Apparently she's been experiencing some weird artifacting. She sees green pixels on her display and she has rolled out the display cable and the monitor. So I think the system is what is giving her problems. And that's actually a rig that we built for her several years ago. I think it's using a first gen Ryzen APU. I told her no problem. Her oldest daughter is actually visiting my wife currently and she She's headed back to Germany tomorrow. And so we need to get this system built today, tested. We need to get windows on it. Basically, we need it as turnkey as possible for my mother-in-law so that uh, she doesn't complain anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's important that my mother-in-law doesn't complain. Now, I want to make it very clear up front that I'm not intentionally gimping this system simply because she's my mother-in-law. If she needed more power, I would certainly give it to her. Uh, but the truth of the matter is she doesn't play any intensive games. She, I think, just for the most part, plays games via Facebook and browser-based games. And those are fairly lightweight by today's standards. So that's why we're sticking with yet another APU, this time the 8000 series Ryzen 5 8600. Six cores, 12 threads, Zen 4 architecture, and a max boost up to five gigahertz, this is gonna be, uh, I think, a bit overkill for what she needs, but it should serve her well for years to come. We're gonna combine it with 32 gigs of Trident Z5 Neo DDR5. I would opt for a 16 gig kit. It's just very difficult to find 16 gig DDR5 kits nowadays that aren't a single module. And of course we want dual channel here because we're using a Ryzen APU. The motherboard's nothing fancy, but it is important that this had built-in Wi-Fi. This is an A620i AX from Gigabyte. One terabyte worth of fast storage is more than she needs. This brand, Arico, I hadn't really worked with before up until a recent PC build. I was impressed with the drive for the money spent, and I think it will do well in her rig. And lastly, our case slash power supply combo. This is actually an Inwin BQ656T. It comes with a 200 watt power supply baked in, which is nice. It's more than enough headroom for our APU combo. This is also an ITX chassis, which is important because my sister-in-law, Christina, will be taking this back via her carry-on luggage. I don't want this being checked and tossed around the underside of an airplane, and I don't want her paying a lot of money for a much bulkier, heavier system. So this should fit in her carry-on luggage. I'm hoping it does. She can, you know, of course, keep a good eye on it. So the impression that she has of my ability to build PCs probably isn't the greatest at this point. And it also doesn't help that I can't actually communicate with her directly. So she she messaged me in German. That's all she knows how to speak. I mean, she can speak other language, but she doesn't speak any English. And I don't speak any German. So we have to use translators a lot and, and that can affect one's ability to, to truly know someone. It, it sucks having to use my wife or, or her sister to translate for me because I want to be able to talk to my to my mother-in-law, my father-in-law directly. I, I want them to know me and not me through someone else. And uh, this is this is something I know I can do very well. And it's an impression that is very important to me. I might not be able to speak to them in English, but I can speak to them in tech. And that's why I want this to be as it's just well-rounded and sorted as possible so that when she pulls it out of her suitcase and plugs it in, it's all ready to go and uh, she's all happy again. And after all, she, she let me marry her daughter, right? So this is the very least I can do and uh, hopefully we can get it up and running and again, turnkey by the end of this video. Are you ready? Stay with me. Surf the web safer and without restriction thanks to NordVPN, their unique threat protection pro for enhanced malware detection and phishing prevention above and beyond simple DNS filtering. Nord offers a wide range of ultra fast servers in over 100 countries for peace of mind while browsing online. And to further bring that point home, they now include a dark web monitor, which continuously scans discovered hacker hangouts and immediately alerts you if your sensitive info is up for sale. There are so many easy ways to trip up online, but you can surf the web and consume media without worry with NordVPN on your side. It's one-click security, common sense in my book, and it's why I continue to personally use them to this day. You'll also gain the added perk of being able to watch TV shows and movies on your favorite accounts without geo restrictions, just tunnel back home like you never even left. Get four extra months on a two-year plan by signing up at nordvpn.com forward slash Greg Salazar. Again, that's nordvpn.com forward slash Greg Salazar, or click the link below. It's totally risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee.
To kick things off, I wanted to quickly show you a parts list uh, for the build we're about to assemble. There are two small changes. Uh, we chose a G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB kit uh, for the list because I couldn't find the exact kit at a decent price as of time of filming. And a Kingston MV2 was chosen in place of our Arico one terabyte NVMe because that Arico drive was not available. You may also find that this system doesn't make a ton of sense from a value standpoint. You could probably do better if you went with something that didn't rely on DDR5, which tends to raise the cost by at least a bare minimum of 50 bucks or so. Uh, and again, that, that's not the purpose of this video. I'm not trying to just build the best value system out there. I just wanted something that was rock solid for her and uh, that hopefully won't give her problems for several years. Now there isn't too much about this build that is complicated, which is of course by design. We're not using a discrete card, of course. We're sticking with a very simple stock cooler. So this entire assembly should be rather short. And would you look at that? A very nice looking board considering this is an A620 chipset. Again, one of the only features that I really wanted to make sure this had because uh, my mother-in-law uses it a lot is built-in Wi-Fi. We could use an adapter, but having it on board just keeps things simple. This is actually my first time working with an 8600. I haven't had a chance to really do anything with these new APUs yet, so I'm curious how this will perform. We might run it through a quick Time Spy benchmark just to see how it stacks up. But there she is, and we have our Wraith Stealth cooler as well. This is gonna really help keep the cost down. And uh, yeah, six cores, 12 threads, a decent graphics processor baked in as well. This actually isn't too bad a chip from what I've seen on paper, considering how much we're paying. Pull back this socket cover to expose these LGA pins. We wanna make sure everything, every attention to detail is respectfully paid. Next, we need to remove these two brackets. The Ray Stealth cooler doesn't need these. We'll just stick with trusty pre-applied thermal paste. Fan cable is connected. You can see I tucked the excess cabling behind this heat spreader. Now it's time for the M.2 and it simply slides just above the chipset heat spreader. So it's something like that. And we'll get one tiny Phillips screw to tighten it down. It does look a bit weird for an NVMe to sit atop another heat spreader without anything else covering it, but this is a cheaper board. So that's what we have to roll with. Last on the platform list is a D DDR5, and this should be fairly straightforward. We'll take care of DIM1 here first. Do we have enough room? Yep, just barely. And then DIM number two. Again, very carefully. There we go. There's a click. And there's the second. Now I am not sure what I got myself into with this case. I, I've never worked with it before. I've rarely used in-win cases at all, to be fair. I think they make great stuff, but a lot of it can be a bit expensive or maybe it's just a little too unorthodox for, uh, for my liking. But this one seemed to really fit the bill. It, it looks like it comes with exactly what we need. It's got a power supply baked in as well, of course, which is nice. And it is not too large. So let's see how she looks. Yeah, definitely at uh, first glance, this is the perfect size. This is exactly what I was looking for. Wow, yeah, this is pretty impressive for a hundred bucks. Not bad. I'm a bit worried though about height clearance. I think our CPU cooler might be a tad too large. Yeah, it's gonna be close because our motherboard's actually gonna sit more like this. It doesn't sit all the way uh, flat on the table. So I don't know, it's 50-50. Also you can see just how small our power supply is. It is of course integrated, which is nice. It sits just below the motherboard. So essentially where like a discrete graphics card would be. And it does come with a uh, 24 pin. It comes with an 8 pin EPS. It even comes with some SATA power cables as well as some extras we got here in the box, which I don't think we're gonna need any of. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you this very cool form factor and the fact that you get this included in a case that costs a hundred bucks, these are usually fairly expensive. Even though it's only a 200 watt unit, this is a pretty sweet deal. And we might get lucky with this top panel because the baked in mesh is actually indented a tad. This might be for specifically coolers like the Wraith Stealth, but uh, I've been wrong before and there's only one way to really find out. First, we don't want to forget about this rear IO shield. Some of these wires out of the way and we'll have at it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is super tight. This is literally meant for just an ITX uh, motherboard and that is it. I think I should probably go in from this side. Yeah, this, this is a, this is an awfully tight squeeze. I'm not even gonna, yeah. Dang, yeah, we're short by like, not even a centimeter. Uh, this is, it's so close. And since I waited so long to figure this out, I really only have one of two options. I can't order something and have it overnighted via Amazon because she's leaving in the morning. There's just not enough time there. I also can't replace this case because well, I'm in the same boat. I can't order a replacement case and have it here on time. And I don't have anything else small enough that's suitable for a carry-on luggage. 
I have two coolers though that might save us. I have an ID cooling. This is an IS40 XV3. It's a 45 millimeter high cooler. And I have a Pure Rock LP from Be Quiet. This one though, I've had a few issues with uh, mounting on especially AM5 motherboards. The uh, layouts of the back plates that hold these coolers in that come with the motherboards aren't always playing nicely with this cooler. So I think I'm gonna go the IS40X route. I just hope that this is taught. This should be shorter in height than the Wraith Stealth. I think 45 millimeters will do it. I hope it does. Ah yes, this is gonna fit much better. I think we won't even need the indention in the mesh for this to uh, fit flush with the panel. And this already has the fan included. So you can see just how much smaller it is than the Wraith Stealth. So let's quickly do the old swaparoo. I've of course repasted it with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. This is actually gonna be better than the uh, stock stuff anyway. And then this cooler should sit like this right here. Yeah, this is so much lower. And that there looks so much better. I'm certain this will work now, which is why I am focusing on cable management. I've got the 24 pin connected. We have the APN EPS run uh, closer to the camera there. I've got the HD audio cable connected, USB 3, as well as the front panel connectors. So like your power switch, your hard drive LED, and your power LED. I believe that is it. We do have the option to add like a, a slim optical drive. She's not gonna use that, so I'm not gonna bother throwing one in here. I wanna keep it as simple as possible and now it's time to fit the top panel back on would you look at that such a snug fit almost like these were made for each other the fan is not quite touching this mesh which is nice i didn't want any contact even with the uh, frame around it just because it might create a bit of extra noise or vibration so all is well i just need to actually figure out how to fasten this down now if it'll slide any more forward there we go. And here we have it. Sheesh, we got really lucky with the cooler choice. I didn't even know that I had uh, this ID cooling, low profile cooler even laying around anymore, but I'm glad that it fits. It looks really nice. It's super compact. It's exactly what she's looking for. And it's super portable for that plane ride. And here we go. I've got the special power cable included uh, in the cases box. We're gonna connect that. I've got the HDMI cable already connected to uh, my capture card OBS. That's where we're gonna install everything. Just keeps it simple. And let's try powering on. Yes. All right, that's great. There's only one fan in the system. It is not very loud. By default, we haven't even tweaked anything yet. Power LED works. So far, so good. It's very quiet. It seems to be working. I think it's posted. Let's swing on over to the capture card. Hey, would you look at that? We've hopped straight into the BIOS. We had to reset TPM. I am hesitating to enable something like XMP or, or Expo in this case, because I don't want any long-term issues with this system. In her case, she's not likely to notice whether it's enabled or not. And I'm just more worried about stability than anything else. I can't like remote into her BIOS, let's say, if something goes wrong. I can only do that within the operating system. So I'd like this to be as, uh, yeah, battened down as possible. I always try to shape my curve something like this here, which should give you a very quiet profile unless you're doing some very stressful stuff. And now we've reset the PC with this thumb drive connected directly to the motherboard. Now this has a copy of Windows loaded onto it, a boot media, and it's actually a custom install. So I've removed a lot of the bloat that Windows carries along with it. It won't require her to sign in if she doesn't want to. It's just gonna be very simple. It'll still have you know the creature comforts. It'll still have a, a web browser by default. It'll still have the Microsoft store, but all that extra crap is gone. And you can see here just how seamless this setup process was. It only asked us to name the PC and that was it. We didn't have to deal with Cortana or location services or ad services. This is a de-bloated Windows install and it's gonna run so much smoother as a result. The next thing I decided to do was allow Windows to auto update on its own. I think that the, the version of Windows that I have on my boot media is a little older than the up-to-date one as of time of filming. So took care of that. Also activated Windows for her. We used our sponsor, of course, VIP SCD key. This isn't a sponsored spot of the video. I just wanted to give them a quick shout because I I personally use them all the time. I don't use any sketchy third-party software. I just don't trust any of it. And I'm not keen on spending 100 plus USD for a retail key. I personally build too many systems for that to make any sense at all anyway. And these are great so long as you aren't changing things like a motherboard where you might have your key reset. Worst case, you just buy another 15 or $20 key. It's not the end of the world. She's not gonna be swapping anything out. So this key should be good for several years. Next on the agenda was to install a bunch of motherboard drivers. I pulled these from a separate system because I couldn't connect to the internet out of the gate. Could you imagine? I 
give this to my mother-in-law and it doesn't have like Wi-Fi or LAN drivers and she can't connect to the internet, how difficult that would be to have to explain to someone in a different language, right? How to install software on a different computer that she frankly doesn't even have. This is the only PC she has. So there's uh, that issue as well to deal with. I wanted to take care of all of this for her. So we have the Wi-Fi driver, the LAN driver, we have the chipset drivers, we have the basic graphics drivers. All of that was installed up front here. And the very last thing we did was install adrenaline drivers direct from AMD's website. I wanted to make sure that these were the most up-to-date possible. Sometimes from the vendor's pages, they aren't the most up-to-date. Uh, so this way, AMD will keep track of what is currently installed and what needs to be updated down the line. And lastly, just for giggles, even though she won't care about this score at all, I wanted to show you a comparable time spy result for this setup here. So again, this is just gonna be the 760M desktop integrated graphics and the Ryzen 5 80. 600G. You can see this system's going to score around 10% better than all submitted results, which is not great, but it's not going to be used for Steam gaming. It's not going to be used for AAA gaming or anything like that. For all the lightweight stuff that she has in mind that she did with her old system, this will be plenty. And well, here we are. There we go. Pretty simple. Didn't take very long. This rig took less than an hour to assemble, honestly. If I, if I was just gathering the amount of time total that it, that it took to assemble this, the only real hiccup was with the cooler swap, and if we didn't have to deal with that, we could have done this in 30 minutes or less. These are very straightforward ITX builds. The power supply was already in here. There were only two or three wires to connect apart from the 24 pin and eight pin EPS. And of course, we didn't have a discrete card. We didn't have uh, an AIO or anything like that to complicate the building process. In fact, now that I think about it, it took longer to set up things in software than it did to actually build with the hardware. And that's okay. Again, that was something that I wanted to make sure that I spent a lot of time doing because now my mother-in-law can just plug this in. She can connect her mouse and keyboard and connect the monitor to the back here. She won't have to worry about, you know, connecting it to the wrong place. There's no discrete graphics card to confuse with the motherboard, uh, you know, video outs and whatnot. So it's all just very plug and play for her. And that's exactly what I wanted. The last thing to do then would be to package it back up in the original case packaging. I'll get it taped. It's probably gonna to get flagged it it, it it will almost certainly be flagged by tsa but uh, once they discover that it's literally just a you know mobile pc uh, there shouldn't be a problem these always look a little questionable in those x-ray scanners they have let's see how does this go it's, it's like that like that there and then we can slide it back into the box all right, we'll get some duct tape and we'll be on our way. Thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider clicking that red subscribe button. We're gonna have all these parts linked in the description if you wanna check them out. And uh, if you wanna stick around for the next video, that would be appreciated as well. I think that's about all I have to say. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks for learning with me. A little bit of an awkward outro there. Yeah. <laughs>